A police report gives new details about an alleged Bakersfield honor killing. New information is released from the charter boat fire off the coast. And increased security measures will be taken during this year's Kern County Fair. This is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Fisher. We begin with police reports obtained by 17 News detailing the case of the man accused of killing his daughter-in-law to protect his family's honor. Jagjit Singh was arrested for the murder of his 37-year-old daughter-in-law, Sumandeep Kaur Kooner, last week. Police say he confessed to shooting her three times inside the family's southwest Bakersfield home. According to reports, Singh told police the day before the shooting, he returned to the home on Menachee Meadows Drive after religious services. Singh said he believed his daughter-in-law didn't realize the family had returned as she was on the phone speaking loudly. The report said he told police he overheard her speaking with a man he believes is from India, discussing plans for her to leave her family and bring him to the United States and marry him so he could get American citizenship. The report says Singh said the next morning, once his son, grandchildren and wife were out of the house, he confronted his daughter-in-law about what he overheard. The report says Singh said he pleaded with her not to leave the family, but he said she didn't want to hear it. According to Singh, stated in the report, that's when his daughter-in-law allegedly threatened to rip her shirt and tell police Singh tried to rape her. The report says Singh said not only would that allegation ruin his family's honor, but he said that if his daughter-in-law were to rip her shirt and expose her chest, that too would dishonor him within his community. The report says Singh said at this point he went to his bedroom to get his gun. And when he returned to the living room, Singh says his daughter-in-law continued to threaten to rip her shirt. Officers say Singh explained to them he would lose his honor in his temple community if he were accused of seeing her naked or accused of assaulting her. The report says Singh said his only choice at the time was, quote, to commit an honor killing of his daughter-in-law for indiscretions and disrespectful behavior. The report also says Singh said at the time it felt like the right choice, but later realized it was not. Singh is scheduled to appear in court again early next month. A Cal Fire engine rolled over in Tulare County, injuring three firefighters. It happened this morning in Decor in Tulare County. Cal Fire says three firefighters were injured and sent to the hospital. The extent of those injuries are unknown. Cal Fire says an investigation is underway. Officials in Southern California confirm 33 bodies have been recovered from Monday's tragic boat fire. Now, only one person remains missing. NBC's Miguel Almaguer has the latest on this horrific story. The 75-foot diving boat, the Conception, engulfed in flames early Monday morning, now sits at the bottom of the ocean, along with clues as to what caused the deadly blaze. 33 passengers and one crew member who were sleeping below deck in these tight quarters, now all presumed dead. Bitty, bitty, bitty. The fire exploding so quickly, the sheriff says the victims never had a chance to escape by these stairs or this emergency exit in time. So the fire had grown so dramatically, there was no way anyone could get out from below deck. That's what it appears happened, I guess. The tragedy is leaving family members struggling to come to terms with the unbelievable loss. My daughter, Alexander Kurtz, was on the conception and she died. According to the sheriff, five crew members were on the top deck of the boat when the fire broke out on the second deck, in or near the galley. Below deck, both exits were apparently blocked by flames. I can't breathe. Three nights, no the surviving crew members jumping overboard as the inferno exploded. This morning, a tragedy at sea amid an ocean of heartbreak. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News. You'll notice increased security at the fair this year. The Kern County Fair says it's installing metal detectors at entrances to the grounds. This all comes after a string of deadly mass shootings across the nation, including the one at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Fair organizers say weapons will not be allowed inside the fairgrounds. They also say there could be delays entering the fair while everyone is checked. In a recent interview with 17 News, Sheriff Youngblood says security at the fair has always been a top priority. He says there will be a heavy law enforcement presence on the ground in uniform and undercover. The fair runs September 18th through the 29th.
An arrest has been made after tense moments for a pair of Lakeside Elementary students as they waited for a school bus. Bakersfield police say a teenager flashed a gun at the two students yesterday morning. BPD says the teen didn't threaten the students who told teachers when they got to school. Officers determined the teen attends Independence High School and stole the gun from a relative. Officers found the gun at home, but the teen was not there. Police say the teen was arrested this morning. He faces a charge of unlawful possession of a firearm. Next month, the newest Kern County High School will have a name. The Kern High School District released eight potential names for the school to be added in Bakersfield. They are Prosperity, Victory, Panama, Tacoma, David Nelson, Buck Owens, Thomas Baker, and Mary Kay Shell. Earlier this year, KHSD asked people to submit names for the new school. The school will be built on the corner of Panama Lane and Cottonwood Road and is scheduled to open in August 2022. The trustees are set to vote on a name at the next board meeting on October 7th. Bakersfield Congressman and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy isn't in his office on Capitol Hill today. That's because he hosted a forum to talk about homelessness here in our community. Homelessness continues to be a big issue. You may remember in January, the point-in-time homeless count tallied more than 1,300 people living on Kern County streets. McCarthy is speaking with the news media right now. We'll have what he said coming up tonight on 17 News at 5. All right, let's take a look at your first uh, weather forecast with Kev. Alex, we're looking at triple digits this afternoon. Here's what we can expect throughout the afternoon. 100 degrees by 3 o'clock, 101 at 6, and then by 9 o'clock, still quite warm. 93, mostly clear in the north wind at 6. For the mountains, we're looking at lower 90s this afternoon. We'll slip back into the 80s by 6, and by 9 o'clock, a westerly wind at 5 and the mid-70s. How about the 80s coming into the forecast? We've got more details on that coming your way in just a few minutes. All right, Kev, thanks so much. Well, they're being hailed as heroes. The Wasco City Council honored five Kern County teens for the action they took that potentially saved a life. 17's Karen Wall was at the City Council meeting and has the story. They're only juniors and sophomores in high school, but they're already being hailed as lifesavers. It all happened two weeks ago while they were on a trip with the Sheriff's Activities League. It started with a group trip to Wild Water Adventures in Clovis. That happened too fast. And these teens walked out as heroes. You guys put the best face forward for our community, and we appreciate your heroism. It's no small feat. When these five Wasco High students saw a girl struggling in the water, they first called lifeguards for help. You wouldn't expect us to be in that position because you would expect adults to, like, do something, but like at that time, no adults were actually doing anything. They imagined the worst case scenario. Panic that someone was gonna drown yeah. and we would have to get out of here, like following an ambulance or something. Then they sprang into action. She can't swim because she had a cramp then. So I swam back and then Haley grabbed the girl and the girl grabbed on both of us together. They held the girl above water until a deputy pulled her to safety. They attribute their quick thinking to Sal. One, two, three, Sal! The Sheriff's Activities League. They've been members of the club for about a year. I actually wasn't surprised because I know they always do the right thing. Acts of impulse that had a high impact. These kids say the most important lesson they learned don't be a bystander. I'm Karen Hua, 17 News. Impressive kids right there. Well, you will soon see In God We Trust decals on police cars in Taft. Last night, the city council unanimously approved adding our nation's motto to patrol cars. In recent months, the cities of Bakersfield, Delano, and Shafter have also added the decals to its police cars. Well, make sure you mark your calendar as we're, we are one week away from our barbecue lunch with the Wounded Heroes Fund of Kern County. Every year, KGET teams up with the Wounded Heroes Fund to raise money for programs that benefit post-9-11 veterans who are transitioning back to civilian life. It's happening next Wednesday from 10.30 a.m. until 2 p.m. right outside our studios at the corner of 22nd and L Streets. And for just 10 bucks, you can get a tri-tip sandwich, a Smith's Bakery cookie, chips, and a drink. Boy, does it look delicious. Well, Hurricane Dorian is moving up the East Coast. When we come back, a look at its track and how people in Florida and the Carolinas are preparing for the worst. Welcome back. Though Dorian is losing strength, people in the U.S. are still getting ready. And crews from California are headed to the storm zone, ready to help in the aftermath 
of the hurricane. Seven urban search and rescue teams left yesterday from parts of the Bay Area, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Sacramento. They'll help local first responders in areas impacted by Dorian. This is not their first rodeo. California's urban search and rescue teams also went to North Carolina after Hurricane Florence hit last year, in addition to assisting with numerous other natural disasters. And although the eye of the hurricane isn't making landfall, the effects from the storm's outer bands are already being felt along Florida's east coast. Jay Gray is in Savannah, Georgia with the latest. We are in the middle of the forecast path right now here in Savannah. We expect to see conditions really start to deteriorate over the next several hours. High winds, uh, driving rains, and perhaps a bit of a storm surge here. And that's what we're going to see all along the southeastern Atlantic coast throughout the day here today. Let's start in the Bahamas, though, where the devastation is overwhelming. Heartbreaking to see what this storm did as it lingered there for almost two full days, really tearing apart communities, others underwater. Now that things have calmed as far as the conditions are concerned, the focus is getting into these battered communities and trying to help survivors and continue to search for those missing right now. No effort or resources will be held back. Now this storm is taking aim at the coast, and really we've seen in Florida uh, some effects from Dorian, lashing waves, rain in an area that's already been saturated uh, over the last month. Uh, the time to prepare, the time to evacuate, quickly running out for those that remain in the path of Dorian. We know how frustrating, difficult, and sometimes costly evacuations can be, but the cost is so much greater with lives lost if, if people roll the dice and stay. It looks like at this point the storm will continue just to mirror the coast. If it does make landfall, that likely would come at the end of the week and along the barrier islands in North Carolina. That's the latest right now from here in Savannah. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you now. And as you just saw, Dorian hit the Bahamas hard. So the Walt Disney Company and Royal Caribbean are pledging $1 million each to help the Bahamas recover. Disney says it will make donations to nonprofits that work on recovery and rebuilding. The company is also promising to send food and construction materials directly to the victims. Royal Caribbean says it is already loading, loading things like water, generators, and cleaning supplies onto its ships to deliver to the Bahamas. Both companies have operations in the island nation. And for a closer look at where Dorian is headed, let's turn things over to Kevin Charette. We have been tracking Dorian for days, and it is losing strength day by day. We're going to hold on to Category 2 strength as we go throughout the rest of the period here. Uh, this storm did pass Cape Canaveral earlier this morning. It will make a slow trek along the Florida coastline and into the Georgia coastline, eventually into the Carolinas the next few days. Again, it's uh, going to move slow. It's got a lot of rain and a pretty big storm surge. So that is the two major concerns with this. Not the winds that we were seeing over the Bahamas, but really the storm surge and the rain and the flooding that we could see uh, with uh, Dorian. Here's a look at the projected rain amounts and you can see from Daytona Beach north that's where we're going to see the heaviest of the rains uh, five to ten, ten inches in some of these areas. Here at home overnight uh, we were uh, nice and comfortable but yesterday we did hit that 100 degrees uh, the record 112 set back in 1955 when we take a look at the almanac here 77 degrees so comfortable overnight we should be in the 60s that even, would be even more comfortable and then our normal high today 93 will be about Love that and 109 the record set back in 1988 satellite radar has been showing much we are going to look for a little development out to the east as we go throughout the afternoon we can't rule out a chance of a thunderstorm later on this afternoon 96 in sacramento 102 in fresno and a hot day down in los angeles they're looking at 93 with 87 in san diego 111 out of phoenix arizona today and then uh, high pressure still in control it will weaken though as we get uh, to the end of the weekend into early next week a couple of troughs developing out of the northwest, and that will usher in that cooler air. But you can see here on Futurecast, put it into motion. Most of the storm activity for uh, today, lingering into tomorrow morning, will be to the east. Uh, not much expected near the Kern County area, but we are going to put a slight chance into the Sierra. And again, some of these may drift a little to the west, and that's why we've only got a 20% chance. Here is the good news for everybody. As the systems develop out of the north, you can see that cooler air pushes on in.
in by next week, and that means the 80s are going to return. Here's a look at the national weather. Take a look. Uh, there hasn't been much to talk about. Again, all eyes have been on Dorian. Some thunderstorm activity up into the northeast today. That'll be the biggest risk. And we got the slight risk again from Colorado, Utah, Arizona, into Nevada, and uh, into the uh, higher mountains of California. Temperatures today, nice and comfortable. Seattle, 77, 92 today and hot in Denver. And then we've got 80s and 90s up into the northeast Florida. We've got 70s uh, for Jacksonville and 93 in Miami. Here's a look at the air quality today. Unhealthy for sensitive groups. Your AQI at 105. And today, we'll call for sunny skies. 102 in Bakersfield and Arvin. 101 in McFarland. 99 in Maricopa. For the mountains in the Kernumber Valley. Slight chance of a thunderstorm. 92 in Fraser Park. 91 in Dash B. Right near 100 for Lake Isabella. 97 in Wofford Heights. And then for the desert, we're looking at 103 in Mojave. And a slight chance of a thunderstorm here as well. Your extended forecast tomorrow. 101 upper 90s on Friday. 80s. There you have it. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Look forward to that. Mountain forecast. A slight chance of a thunderstorm through tomorrow. 80s return by Friday and 70s by Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And then for the Kern River Valley, slight chance of a thunderstorm through tomorrow. And then we get cooler as we get closer to the weekend with 80s Saturday through next Tuesday. That's look at your forecast. We'll send it back over to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. Not a bad forecast. The NFL kicks off its 100th season in style when the Green Bay Packers play the Chicago Bears at historic Soldier Field tomorrow night. Right here on TV 17, the Football Night in America team has a preview. Season 100 for the National Football League. Best way to start the most played rivalry in league history. Soldier Field for the Bears and the Packers to kick off the season. And for the first time in 13 seasons, the Packers have a new head coach. Yes, they do. And Aaron Rodgers, for the first time in his career, has a new offensive system. I went to Indianapolis in the middle of Peyton Manning's career, but I was a defensive coach, so I didn't fool with the system Peyton was able to stay with that. Aaron now has Matt LaFleur, new offensive system, and we had to see the chemistry, how that works out. I'm anxious to see how that works for the Packers' offense. When I'm looking at the Chicago Bears, I look at their offense. We know they have a great defense, a top-five defense, but the big question is they have a lot of skill guys. Can Mitchell Trubisky take them to the next level? I think I look at them last year. They allowed him to throw the ball down the field, be a lot more aggressive. I think he can take this team to the Super Bowl. I think that's how good he can be. Can't wait to see you from Chicago for the Packers and the Bears to kick off the NFL season. And just a reminder, you can catch Thursday night's regular season opener right here only on TV 17. Football Night in America, again, starts at 5 o'clock, followed by a special edition of 17 News. And this Saturday, you can watch the Bakersfield College football home opener live right here on TV 17. The Renegades host Mount San Antonio for the Tri-Tip Kickoff Classic. Game time is 6 p.m. right after 17 News at 5.30. A lot of football going on. All right, if you're looking to buy a new home soon, prepare to pay more. The reason why prices are going up after the break. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back and checking stocks on this Wednesday. The Dow Jones is up 233 points. NASDAQ is up 98. S&P 500 up 30. If you're looking to buy a home, you're probably going to be paying a bit more. Home prices are going up again. Home price gains shrunk over the last year, but shot up again this summer. Real estate experts say the rise is likely driven by millennial home buyers, more than a quarter of whom said they're interested in buying a house in the next 12 months. That's according to a survey by financial services company CoreLogic. Home prices were up almost 4% in July compared to July of last year. CoreLogic now predicts an even bigger jump in housing prices by next July. Facebook may also soon stop showing the likes on posts. The social media giant is considering a test to hide likes from newsfeed posts. It's in an attempt to curb the obsession with getting likes on pictures. If implemented, Facebook will hide the number of likes on a post from other users. Instead, users would see a note that the post was liked by a friend, but not the exact amount of likes. The user who created the post can see a list of people and their reactions, but a number will not be displayed. Facebook already tested a similar move on Instagram in August and said the tests were successful. All right, we're back after this. Welcome back to 17 on set and joining us this afternoon is Wayne Wright and Bill Port Potter here to talk about the To Honor and to Remember event. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about uh, what this event is. This is our annual, the VFW Post 97. It's our annual POWMI Remembrance Program. 
and we will be honoring, well, all POWs, mm -hmm. but all former POWs. We have uh, three that will be on stage, two from World War II, one from Korea. We'll also be honoring the uh, missing in action, uh, which there's 82,018 as of today that are still missing. And we'll have family members that are there uh, be honoring them. And then afterwards, uh, we'll be having a, a barbecue. Okay, and you have, a, a, again, that barbecue. So tell us a little bit about why you guys are doing this. This has been an annual event. It's been an annual event for as many years as I can remember. Mm -hmm. But Post 97 has been doing it for 20 years at the Post. This okay. is the first year that we will be doing it at the Bakersfield Music Hall of Fame. Okay, so again, this is happening on, uh, oh, on Saturday. And there's still tickets available? Yes. Okay, and where can they get those tickets? Uh, at the uh, at the event, you can oh, so you can just show up. First sure. come, first serve, and it, the event's totally free to the public. Okay, and then of course there is a cost for dinner, uh, which is fifteen dollars. So, but it's thirteen if you come to the event. Oh, if it's thirteen, if yep. you come to the event, okay. So it's there you special. go. It's kind of a special, right? <laughs> yeah. So again, yes. this is happening on Saturday, September seventh, uh, starting at three p.m. And it's of course a great way uh, to you know to gather and learn more about uh, and, and honor everyone. So yes. uh, again, it's happening on Saturday. We'll post all this information on our website, KGET. Dot com. Thanks so much, gentlemen, for coming in. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. All right. All Thanks right. for having us. We're back after this. Welcome back. In sports, you either perform when it's your turn or crumble under the pressure. And one particular Dodgers fan last night had his one shining moment in a game against the visiting Colorado Rockies. In the top of the fourth inning, Rockies third baseman Nolan Arenado belted his 37th home run of the season towards center field. And waiting there for a souvenir was the fan leaping to make the highlight grab in a blocked off section of seats. And as Aeronado made his triumphant trot around the bases, the lucky fan was making his triumphant high fives among the crowd in LA. Major League Baseball's play of the day coming from outside the diamond. And by the way, the Dodgers are just that much closer to clinching the NL West. The Giants were eliminated last night, and that means that they just have to face the Arizona Diamondbacks that have. Uh, again, they are down five games, so it means that uh, the magic number is five for the Dodgers before they can clinch the NL West. Again, we're going to see the triple digits today and tomorrow before we see a cool down. We can see the mid-80s by the weekend and kind of a nice start to the uh, new work week. So just a couple more days of triple digits today and tomorrow, and then we really see that cool down, which is, of course, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a beautiful cool down, beautiful weekend, especially for all the events that are happening around the county. Thanks so much for joining us for 17 News at Noon. We'll see you back here for the news at 5. 17 News, your local news leader, continues 24 hours a day on KGET.com and our 17 News app in the spirit of the Golden Empire. 17 News.